Welcome to the chain rule. This video possibly may change your lives when it comes to derivatives. So let's learn how to do it. This is part eight in my derivative rule series of videos. So let's learn how to knock out derivatives with the chain rule. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hopefully these videos are helping you out. So here's the deal. The chain rule is one of the most powerful differentiation rules. This rule deals with composite functions and adds a surprising versatility to the rules we've already learned, meaning that within the chain rule, you can actually use all of the rules that we've already known. Now, it can be used in many, many situations. It can even be used in situations that involve far simpler rules, but primarily we need it for composite functions. So before we learn what the chain rule is, we probably should recap what a composite function is. So a composite function is when we have an overall function f of x, and then we take another function g of x, and we plug it in to f of x, hence creating a composite function, taking a function g and plugging it into function f. So pretty simple. That's a composite function. One function put into another function. Now here is a couple of examples so we can kind of understand, you know, what is the composite function versus what is not. So in this first line right here, we have x squared plus 5, and we literally plug it into a square root. So, so my overall function here is the square root of x. And I took this new function, x squared plus 5, and I plugged it in to that square root, creating this new composite function. Here's another example. So I have my overall function in this second row here as sine of x. And I took this new function, 6x, and I plugged it in. So again, my overall function is sine of x. The function that's going into that is 6x. I'm literally taking a function, plugging it into another function. Here's another example right here on this next third line. My overall function is x to the fifth, but I took the function 6x minus 7, and I plugged it into that function. So I get 6x minus 7 to the fifth. This next one, once again, I had a, a overall function of x plus cosine of x, and I took this new function, 4x squared, and plugged it into that cosine function. And then this last one here, you might be saying, wait a minute, those aren't composite functions. Well, if you think about it, I literally am plugging sine into sine. So, so hold on one second. One second, let me, let me rephrase that. So I have an original function of x squared. I have something squared, but what is the something that's being squared? Sine of x. So I literally have sine of x squared. Sine went into x squared. Now listen, I really hope I'm not confusing you, but let's just take it slow. The simple idea here is that we have a function that has another function inside of it. Keep that in mind. That's going to be really important when it comes to understanding the chain rule. Now here's another way to look at it. Instead of using two functions, f of x and g of x, let's use f of x as my main function, and then let's use another function that I'm just going to call u. Like, just keeping it bare, bare minimum, very simple, the other function is u. I mean, what is u? You could be something simple like 2x, you could be something more complicated like x squared plus 4x, you could even be like a trig function sine of x, or you could even be, you know, like 1 over x squared. I mean, whatever, you could be whatever it wants, right? It's its own function but we're taking that function, u, and we're plugging it into another function, creating f of u. So literally, u is going into f of x. So to utilize the chain rule, I'm about to teach you. I'm about to teach you the chain rule, I promise. You need to first identify what the function u is. Like, what's the inside function that got plugged into some larger function? And that oftentimes can be the trickiest part of using the chain rule, and I'm going to try my best to explain that to you when we do this. All right, so here it is. Here is the chain rule. Get ready for it. I know it's going to be a little confusing. Just bear with me for a moment. All right, so here we go. We literally have a function g plugged into a larger function f. So literally taking g into f, there's my composite function. So the chain rule will say, I can help you find the derivative of this composite function. Here's what you do. You start off with finding the derivative of f with g inside of that derivative. So literally, the derivative of f with g plugged inside of it, okay? And then you multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. Whoa, take your time for a second, process that. I got to find the derivative of f, but inside of that goes g. 
Then I multiply by the derivative of g of x. Hmm, okay, maybe you're a little bit lost. Let's try explaining that with our u, right? So I have um, this function u plugged into another function. So to find the derivative, I find the derivative of my function with u inside of it. Then I have to multiply by the derivative of u. Okay, uh, I don't know, maybe that helped or didn't help. And here's one more look at the chain rule, kind of with power rule flavor. Let me kind of explain this. So imagine we have a function u raised to the n. But u is not just a single variable like x, it's, it's much more, it's its 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 own function. So to find the derivative here, I'm going to bring the n down, my new power on that base of u is n minus one. And again, I'm leaving u alone inside of there and then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of u. That's another version of the chain rule. Okay, listen, you might be thinking to yourself, what? <laughs> yeah, listen, listen. I was confused too when I first learned the chain rule. It's not the easiest of rules, but once we get it rolling, I truly promise that you'll find it very easy and extremely helpful. So rather than trying to explain to you this crazy rule, let's just dive into some examples and see how it works. All right, so here is my first example. The function is 6x minus 7 all raised to the fifth. So u is the 6x minus 7. It's inside of the larger function x to the fifth. So I literally took 6x minus 7 and I plugged it into this larger function x to the fifth and that became 6x minus 7 to the fifth. So let's use the chain rule. I really want you to start to realize how easy this is. Here we go. Ready? The 5 falls down in front. The u on the inside stays completely the same, completely unchanged. My new power is 4. So basically I just use the power rule. 5 fell down in front, new power on that base of 6x minus 7, that's my u, is 4. But then here's the tricky part you can't forget about. You have to multiply by the derivative of u. You have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Well, that's easy. The derivative of 6x minus 7 is just 6. That's using the power rule and the constant rule because the derivative of the negative 7 is just 0. So the derivative is 6. And that's it. So as confusing as the chain rule was when I explained it, literally the answer is 30 times 6x minus 7 to the 4th. Of course, I can multiply the 5 times the 6 to get that 30. That's it. There is my derivative. Not overly complicated. But I would want to make sure that, you know, sometimes it can help you to take out the u for a second, 6x minus 7, and then we have u to the 5th. So again, I'm using the derivative rule, the chain rule, right? 5 falls down in front, u to the 4th, and then I have to multiply by the derivative of u. That, like, that's literally what the chain rule says. But that's where I say, okay, now i got to plug u back in. So the u is 6x minus 7 raised to the 4th. And then the derivative of u right here, well, that's just my 6, and that's how I got the 30 times 6x minus 7 to the 4th. Okay, listen, first example, maybe you're still, not con you're still a little confused. It's okay, we'll, we'll work on it, I promise. All right, next function here. The square root of x plus squared plus 5. So u is the inside portion, x squared plus 5. The overall function f of x is the square root of x, which I'm going to treat as x to the 1 half. So the first thing I could actually do is rewrite this as x squared plus 5 raised to the 1 half. So here I go trying to use the chain rule. First, I'm going to use the power rule. The 1 half falls down in front. The inside stays the same. That's my u that does not change. My new power is one less than my old power, negative one half. But here's the crux of it all. Don't forget to multiply by the derivative of that inside portion, which is going to be a 2x. All right, now I just have to clean this up. First, I hate negative exponents. So I got to move them to denominator. So what's in my numerator? What is not going to move? That's the one times the 2x. One times 2x is 2x. And the denominator is this 2 right here from the 1 half. And then I'm going to move the x squared plus 5 to the denominator where it can, be have, a, where it can have that positive exponent of 1 half. Now I realize something even cooler is going to happen. These 2s are going to reduce to a 1. So I just get x over. And you can even change that back to a square root if you want. Because once you're a positive 1 half, that's a square root. x squared plus 5. Square root of x squared plus 5. There is my final answer to the derivative. But again, take your time and understand what I did. If you want, rewrite this original function as the square root of u. 
then you're going to write that as u to the one half. Using the power rule, the derivative is one half u to the negative one half, but the chain rule literally says don't forget to multiply by the derivative of u. So all I'm doing is plugging the x squared plus 5 back in for u, and then I have to find the derivative of u, that's the back part, that we multiply by. Okay, maybe getting a little bit easier. Maybe, I don't know, we'll see. All right, here we go. Next one. Oh, okay, so my u is the inside 6x cubed. My original function that u goes into is sine of x. All right, so the chain rule says take the derivative of your original function, sine of x. The derivative of sine is cosine, but leave the inside of it alone. So the derivative of sine was cosine. The inside, my u, stays u, 6x cubed. And then here's the trick of the chain rule. Don't forget to multiply by the derivative of that inside portion. 3 falls down in front, multiplies by the 6 to get an 18, x squared. New power is there. That's it. You're done. Now, the only thing I'm going to do to kind of clean this up is put that 18 squared out in front of the cosine, and the 6x cubed is inside the cosine. That's it. That's the chain rule. It's not overly complicated, even though it actually looks overly complicated. Once you start using it, it's not too bad. All right, here's another function. Now, this is the one I talked about earlier. This is actually sine of x squared. So this time, the u is the sine of x that's inside of the original function. The original function is x squared. So I literally took sine, plugged it into x squared, which created this sine squared. So again, using the derivative rule. Here we go. First, the power rule. That 2 is actually going to fall down in front. The u portion stays the same. The new power is 1. Again, the inside, the u, originally stays u. But then here's the big part of the chain rule. Don't forget to multiply by the derivative of that u. And the derivative of u is cosine of x. So now I get a final derivative of 2 sine of x to the first. That's just sine of x times cosine of x, and voila, I am done. Now, just as a complete side note, if you really know your trig identities, you could even rewrite this as 2, or no, I'm sorry, I actually got it wrong myself there. You could rewrite that as sine of 2x, just in case you're curious. But you don't have to do that. Using this right here is a good derivative. So again, take the time to process that. Figuring out your u is really, really, really important. All right, here's another one. Okay. All right, the inside portion for u is the 3x squared minus 4. The overall function is 2x to the 4th. So I literally took this 3x squared minus 4, that's my u, plugged it into 2x to the 4th, which led to this crazy looking function. But how do I find the derivative? So easy. Use the power rule. 4 falls down in front. 4 times 2 is 8. Leave the U alone. Once you use that power rule, the, the U stays the same. Don't change it. But here it comes. The chain rule says, don't forget to multiply by the derivative of that U value, which is, of course, just 6X. Done. Now, the only thing I could do is, of course, multiply the 8 times the 6X to get 48X. And then I have my 3X squared minus 4 raised to the third. There's my derivative. I mean, actually, it's kind of simple. All right, let's try another one here. In this problem, the inside portion is the 3x squared minus 6x. My overall function is kind of a weird root, but it's a 4 times x to the 1 fifth. That's a 4 times the fifth root of x, but I actually would rather it be a fifth root as a 1 fifth power right now. But I'm going to go ahead and use the power rule. Here we go. Power rule, 1 fifth falls down in front. 4 times 1 fifth is 4 fifths. The inside stays the same. You initially do not change u. You just leave it u. Your new power is one less than the old power. One fifth minus five fifths is negative four fifths. But here's where the chain rule comes. Multiply by the derivative of that u value. Multiply by the derivative of that inside portion. And we get 6x minus 6. 2 falls down in front. 3 times 2 is 6x minus 6. Hopefully everybody knows those basic derivative rules by now. All right, now all I got to do is clean this up, which is sometimes the most difficult part. Um, in the denominator is going to be that 5 from right there. And then I don't want a negative exponent, so that 3x squared minus 6x is now going to be raised to the positive 4 fifths in the denominator. And the numerator, I actually could distribute this 4 to this part over here. 
So I get 24x minus 24. There's my final derivative. Not the prettiest derivative in the world, but I mean, if you understand the rule that I just used, I kind of did it all in two steps, not too bad. All right, here is another one. So what is my u value? That is the cosine of x that is inside of the square root of x. I literally took cosine of x and I plugged it inside the square root. Might actually be easier if I rewrite this as cosine of x to the one half. All right, here I go to find the derivative. Use the power rule. One half falls down in front. The u on the inside stays the same. New power is negative one half. Now I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's my u, negative well, I almost wrote cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. All right, now I just got to clean this up because I don't want to leave a negative uh, exponent in my final answer. So my numerator is going to be 1 times negative sine of x, which is negative sine of x, all divided by 2 times cosine of x to the 1 half, which of course, if you wanted to, you don't have to, but if you wanted to, you could rewrite that as a square root of cosine of x, but in the denominator. There is my final derivative. Not overly difficult. Now listen, the most best quality of the chain rule is it's very versatile, right? The chain rule could be used in so many places. Even when the power rule, product rule, quotient rule could have been used, the chain rule actually might make it easier. So at the end of the day, if I ask you to find the derivative of a problem, I really don't care what rule you use. Maybe you use a rule that's actually easier. Now, I actually want to show you that the power rule really is the chain rule? Let me prove that to you with this problem. Now, most kids would never ever use the chain rule. They would just straight use the power rule. Three falls down are fun. 15x squared. Wipe your hands. You're done. You're correct. But actually, we are using the chain rule here because you could look at the inside value u as x. So really, it's 5x cubed. And what I'm plugging into 5x cubed is x making 5x cubed. So again, if I'm thinking about this problem as the chain rule, I'm going to say, okay, let's use the power rule. 3 falls down in front, 15. Inside portion x stays the same. New power 2. Chain rule says don't forget to multiply by the derivative of that u. What's the derivative of x? 1. Oh, oh yeah. Multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. My final answer is 15x squared. So literally, I am using the chain rule. I just don't call it that. But I am. When you use the power rule, you are using the chain rule. Because when your inside function is just x, when you multiply by the derivative of x, which is 1, it doesn't change you. But that, again, is the chain rule if you're understanding that. All right, let's look at another problem. Now, you might originally look at this problem and say, oh, I'm going to use the quotient rule. I clearly have something divided by something else. But check out how I'm going to use the chain rule because I'm smart. I'm actually going to bring the denominator, 3x plus 1, up to the numerator with the negative exponent. Anything that is in a denominator can move up to a numerator if you simply give it a negative exponent. So all I did right there was rewrite my function. Now I'm looking at my inside value as 3x plus 1. That's my u. My actual original function would be 2x to the negative 1. So I have this function 2x to the negative 1, and I'm literally taking 3x plus 1 and plugging it into there. But now watch how easy it is to find this derivative. I don't even need the quotient rule. The chain rule can do it for me. Negative 1 falls down in front, making a negative 2. Inside stays the same. New power is negative 2. Don't forget to multiply by the derivative of that u value, which is just 3. And voila, I'm done. All I got to do is clean this up. In the numerator, the negative 2 times 3 is a negative 6. Totally cool there. But in the denominator, I'm going to put the 3x plus 1 to the positive 2. So right there, I avoided the quotient rule, used the chain rule, and I actually got the answer rather quickly without a ton of work. So pretty cool new rule here. I'm not asking you to be an expert after watching this one 20-minute video, but hopefully it will really kind of help you understand how the chain rule is used, and we can continue to practice and practice and practice with more advanced problems. Now, really difficult problems are when you're using the product rule with the chain rule inside of it. We'll make a video about that a little bit later and look at some examples. But this video was totally dedicated to the chain rule. Hopefully, you found it not too bad after we did some examples.